Hey, you ever been to Chancellor Park? That's where I live. My name is Tavin Dillard, and I live in a trailer park called Chancellor Park, and I mow lawns. I'd like to introduce you to my town. I've been making YouTube's videos since about 2006, and then I've transitioned over to other platforms like the TikToks and the whatnot. But here on this podcast, I'd like to clue you into what's going on with me here lately. And this is like a pre-introduction. Now I'm going to send it off to myself for the real introduction. I'm glad you joined me. Bink, bink. Well, welcome to the Tavern Diller Podcast, y'all guys. I'm podcasting from the Burger Shed. I want to thank Bud for letting me come in here after hours. Uh, it's a little quieter than the trailer park right now, so I'm coming down here to do this. This is different because it's a video of the of the podcast that's going to be on the YouTubes. Usually, I just put up the the sound, like because it's a podcast, it's a radio show, so you just listening. But today. I do the video and I don't know if it's going to work. So if you go to YouTube and all you just see is like a still photo of me and then you just hear this, you say, oh, he didn't like how that video turned out. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm just sitting here kind of going through my story, but we on uh, episode seven. So that means there's six other episodes before this. And I say go back and start with them because I'm steady walking you through this softball season. And it ain't been the easiest season, you know, but, that, you know, them journeys in life. <clears throat> you know, them journeys in life, uh, that's what makes them a journey is they ain't no straight line. They's the highs and lows and ups and downs. Well, we just chest naked two weeks. That's what we call a low, you know, kind of thing. Then we got uniforms. And if you're watching the video, you see I got on the new Bud's Burger Shed hoodie. I mean, you, we come a long way is what I'm saying. And uh, I mentioned last week there's a discount code. I'll put the in the show notes, <clears throat> the show notes in the, in the podcast, you click on that link. And you can head over, you know, and check out, I mean, all kind of, all kind of gear, but, uh, we talking about Burger Shed right now. Oh, this hat I got on, you know, we got that in the shop too. Uh, and bank, bank, just so you know, there is now, I'm pretty excited about this. Cause then you just start feeling more like a team, you know, the uniform is a big step in the right direction, but we, everybody's wearing whatever the hat they got, you know, the fields, JT Whitlow, 90% of the time has his own backwards, you know, it's adult softball league, so it ain't going to be all super formal, but I tell you right now, uh, it's available to our team, but it's available to you, because the way I see it is you on our team, Bud's Burger Shed hats, available right now. Oh, Tabin, I don't know if I can afford no hat, I know, I know, but how about this, how about a 10% off discount code? Okay, get your pen and paper. Write down this code. Bank, bank, B-I-N-K, B-I-N-K. And you got yourself a discount on that, so you can click that. Don't do it right now, though. We just barely started the podcast, and if you know what that is, it's like a radio show, so I'm done. I knocked over a cup here, and, I, and it distracted me. I ain't never had to deal with the distractions, you know, of not being in my own trailer to record, so... Uh, you know, I'm like a squirrel, just just easily distracted. Anyways, uh, go ahead and go back to team, you know, to, to episode one if you want to catch up on what we're doing. But we was, you know, like I said, we was chest naked, but also we was team three. Like we didn't have no name. It's not like we sat down, hey, let's be called team three. You know, like they give you that and then you got to figure out who your sponsor is. It took us a minute. But like I said, we Bud's Burger Shed. We coming off a big W last week. Uh, w is short for a win. You know, if you ain't you ain't used to like athletic lingo, um, and it wasn't an easy win. You know, we had to battle for it. We had to scratch and claw and fight for it. It's a high scoring game, you know. But uh, the thing about it is, it's like a two part or two because the concession stand uh, caught on fire last week. Mary Beth Tucker, she's in there decided to do s'mores. Anyways, I mean, I ain't going to retell all that. You can go listen to last week's episode. But anyways, we lost the concession stand, but we did not lose the game but they had to like do it in sections like we started on a thursday night we finished it on a friday night but they put our runners back on base where they were when the fire started so we get them runners on and then rusty tidwell back up to bat and all of a sudden one thing led to another we going home with a w and then uh everybody's going home with no concession stand at the fields because they got to get a new one to put back it back up our 
anyways, we was riding high. We went to Bud's afterwards. We came down here to the Burger Shed, kind of filled it up with, you know, a bunch of stanky softball players wearing Bud's, you know, Burger Shed shirt. I told him the news, you know, that we's winners. Hey, you know, your your team you sponsors are winners now. We got a W. It was a hoop. Mort Dwight L felt so good. He went ahead and got a milkshake, which uh, if you know anything about Mort, he can't. He don't do well with the dairy. You know, paid for it later is the way he tells it. Uh, I didn't ask him to tell all the details because he's liable to tell you uh, every single last detail at any given time, even in the lunch hour, rush hour at the burger shed. Uh, Mort ain't got no filter on that kind of thing. So short story is Mort has like milk trait behagene, which is like, you know, he can't have no dairy. It tears him up. But we did win a game and and we had a week to recover so it's not like he had we had a game the next night and the next night like he i don't know what he did for work the next day but he didn't have to you know he didn't have to go play no game after he he decided to tear into a milkshake and then i way i understand that milkshake decided to tear into him but that's how it goes if you know anything about milk trait behagene you know you can't have no dairy or it'll tear you up so anyways we did win a game and uh now, where do I... Well, I guess we start with Chet Dilroy this week. He lives on the outside of town. He in his 50s now, maybe mid-50s. I don't know. He's been around a while older than me. And he got a son that lives in Chancellor Park, which is my trailer park. And his son got a daughter named Candy Dilroy. She about eight year old. Well, that's kind of where I want to start today. You know, that Candy Dilroy, she come to my trailer. Um, on more than one occasion, she's caught a crow like an adult crow, just with her hands. Like, she don't build like a crow trap or nothing. She just, I, for some reason, this gal, Candy, got a knack for catching crows. I don't know how that's ever going to serve her well in life, nothing like that. I'm just saying, I'm just telling you what, I'm just like a documentary here. I'm just, uh, uh, you know, reporting what I see. Candy Dilroy, eight-year-old, she can catch cr her tro crows. First time that happened, I had my hand in a bag of tater chips, you know, just in my trailer. End of the day, and there's a knock on my door, just kind of, kind of thing. I open it up, and there's Candy, just, she kind of look at me, and she's holding like a full-grown crow. And it ain't like a full-grown crow, it's like an adult crow. That's what it is. Very embarrassed. I don't know if you, I, I don't know, like I didn't go to school to be able to read the emotions of a crow, uh, for sure I didn't. I know I didn't go to school for that, but there's some things you just pick up along the way and you can look at that thing and it's just kind of like embarrassed. It's so embarrassed. So I'm looking at Candy. She looking up at me like bank, bank, like she holding this full grown crow and she's just kind of like bank, bank. And I'm looking at her like bank, bank. And then I look at that crow and that crow's just kind of like, well, not having a good day. And, and he kind of looked up at me too, just kind of bank, bank, like a slower bank than me or Candy did because, you know, he's embarrassed. Uh, first time I heard of Bank Banks when I got called down to the burger shed to help Bud with um, something. He said, I don't know what it's up there in the air duct tavern, but it's alive. And he's like, I'll give you like a number three combo meal to get in there and get that thing out. And so I didn't know what I was in for except a number three combo meal. And that's highly motivating, you know, a seasoned curly fries, bacon double cheeseburger, Dr. Pepper. So that's how that was going to go down. And uh, I get down there and... I apparently it's a, like a pigeon, you know, dove pigeon family because it got released from a wedding a couple of weeks before and it was just in this air duct and it was like surprised to see me, but also it was like kind of hopeful, I think. Again, I don't know what it is, but I look at that little thing's eyes and I could read like a little hope when he saw me. Like he wasn't mad, he wasn't about to attack me or nothing like, can you help me, sir? Kind of thing is what it was. So I was in there with that and uh, I, I'm just looking at this pigeon. I crawled up to him wide. I didn't want to spook it and he's wide eyed like me. That's, anyways, that's the first time I heard the bank bank. And, you know, it's first, it shook, you know, like a dog getting out of a river and it had like soot on it. I don't know really why there was soot or how it got soot on it in Bud's air ducts. That's another question or story. But, anyways, I reach out my hands and I got my hands cupped, like, you know, like I'm trying to get a bee out of a swimming pool and I'm just going to see if it's going to reach out to me and that thing look at me and before it take a little, you know, one of its little feet to step into my hand, it just kind of look and it go bank, bank, like it sounded, I, its eyes did the bank, but I felt like I could hear the noise bank, bank in my head. That's the first time I ever heard that. And that thing blinked at me, took a step in my hands. I banked me back. I ended up getting him out of there. And I don't like him tight spaces. You know, when you, when you in a small closure and you can't get out easily and there's, it's just a claustrosaurus rex where you, you don't like the side so tight and close on you. Uh, that's what I have, I think. But you know, again, number three, uh, combo mill can be highly motivating, uh, overcome your, 
you know, your phobias, I guess you want to say, or <clears throat> however. So I get out of there. And now here I am now. Um, I'm bank banking at a crow that Candy Dilroy done with and caught, you know, and she's holding it, you know, full grown crow, little eight year old hands around it. And so, I mean, it's everything she has to be able to keep a grip on this thing. Truth be told, I don't even know how she knocked on my trailer door because she couldn't, if she let go of that crow, it'd be out of there. So I don't know if she used her foot. It's a mystery to me. Like I said, this girl is talented. Now, I don't know how this talent going to serve her in catching crows in her life and being able to knock on doors while still not letting go of a crow. But I, I'm just, I'm telling you what I'm seeing. She got this full grow crow. And uh, I'm looking at Candy, you know, and I'm like, Candy, why, why, why'd you catch that crow kind of thing? And she just come at me with like, well, that, e that easy to catch, Tavin. And that's another thing. It's like, Candy, just, you know, I'm thinking, just because something easy to do don't mean you got to do it. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be nothing for me to push this uh, washing machine that Mima has. It don't work. It's on the front porch of her trailer. She ain't got a wide porch anyway. It wouldn't be nothing for me just to push that to the edge and just watch that thing crash and hit the floor. Um, and it give her more space on the porch. But I could do that. But just because I could, don't, I don't mean I'm going to. I, first of all, I ain't got Mima's permission, and I don't. I don't mess with her stuff without her saying, you know, her say so. So we make eye contact and I'm looking at Candy, bank, bank. She looking at me, bank, bank. I look at that crow, Riberis, like it looked to the ground, just like it don't, it don't even want to be here to talk about this thing. You know, it's no, it knows like, uh, it should be shamed. You know, it's got wings. Thinking it's an eight year old girl. She ain't fast. I don't know how she did it. And that crow, you know, he's responsible in some ways. Like, I don't know what you were so locked into, but but you got to be aware of your surroundings because you, you done got caught. And the crow just looked at me and shrugged like, I know, I hate it too, you know. So there we are. She's on my front porch. And then I get I get an idea and I say, Candy, you like that bird? Oh, oh yeah, Tevin, I sure do. I was hoping you'd let me use that little hat box underneath your trailer, you know, for like a little house for it. And then once I get it in that house, I'm going to get it dressed up. I'm going to put a bonnet on it kind of thing. And boy... That little crow perked up like that was news to the crow. Like I, nobody said nothing about no bunny. He looked at me like, please, sir, I behoove thee. Can you please just help me out a little bit? Now, I don't know why he'd speak like in old English like that, but that's just the way I put it together in my head. Like I said, I don't know how, I don't know how professionally uh, to read a bird or their, their emotions, but I'm telling you, when that crow heard that Candy Dilroy was going to put a bonnet on it and build a little crow house for it, it looked at me, and I mean, earnestly, and like, please don't, you know, like, please do something here. You got thumbs. Can you, Is there any way you can intervene on this situation? Like, all this stuff, like, I'm just steady looking at this crow, but he's thinking all kind of things. I'm pretty sure that's part of this stuff he is thinking. So I'm there and she's thinking, oh boy, it's, it's, it's going to look so pretty. You know, she's excited that, and, uh, I got an idea and I said, Candy, why don't you let that thing go? You know, she didn't like the, she, you know, her, her little eyebrows go down. Like, I don't know about that. I said, and it'll fly because it got wings. That's what it do. But if it circle back around here and decide to land in that box that you want to make a house out of it for, then, you know, it was meant to be. But you got to let it go and see if it's going to fly back. And hey, I'm telling you right now, for whatever reason, that made sense to Candy. Uh, and she she looked down at Crow, then back up to me, and she just kind of looking, looking like this. And she said, okay. And she let that Crow go, and it flew away. It didn't come back. It's gone. And I think Candy might have done our trailer park a service, truth be told, because the way I look at it is that... Uh, that crow, them crows communicate well. You know, they caw, caw, and that, and you know it ain't saying, hey, everybody come back to this trailer park. You're liable to get caught putting a cardboard box and a bonnet on your head. No, it's probably saying get out. And now, now we ain't got to worry about, you know, like leaving half a bag of hot fries on the trailer porch and a crow done dive vomiting it and stealing our food and kind of thing. I mean, that crow uh, message might have been sent and hopefully message received. Like, hey, you come here, you're liable to get caught by Candy Dilroy. I'm just thinking that 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 could be a win-win. But I ain't trying to tell you about Candy Dilroy today, actually. I'm just saying that's a relation because really my story is about her granddaddy, Chet Dilroy. Now, Chet's the one whose property backs up to Rusty's Tidwells, and they got like a creek in between their properties. 
kind of run right in between. And me and Russell, we've been working on a ramp for a remote control uh, car thing because we got he got a birthday party for his brother-in-law coming up, and we're trying to get this ramp. So, you know, at the party, the, these remote control cars ramp in the creek, it's going to be all kind of fun. That's the idea, at least. Well, the day we was out there kind of working on Chuck Dilroy's sister-in-law, Delandra, had no business being on this early model uh, two-stroke Yamaha moped, but she gunning it across a field, steady headed toward that creek that we were standing by. Now, the thing about it, if you on a moped and you heading toward a creek, the, I mean, the option you got is to ramp it, but there ain't no ramp built. All we got is like a little ramp for a remote control car, but a sturdy lady on a, you know, full-size moped, you, you know, that thing going to crush it. Ain't going to, going to, ain't going to help, uh, you know, trajectory her nowhere. It's just going to run that thing over and she's going to head right in that creek. So I'm just looking at this thing like, what in the world about to happen? You know, me and Rusty just there just can't, can't like figure out why in the world Delandra is just gunning it. I guess in her head, she just, she's feeling it or either she didn't know what she's doing or she was so confident that she did know what she's doing. But the thing is, you gotta go, if you're gonna ramp a moped and you ain't even got no ramp, you gotta have some arm strength. You gotta have some arm strength to lift up on them, them handlebars, uh, or else that thing just gravity gonna take over, cause gravity matters. You can't not take gravity into account and think you ain't gonna feel the consequence of. So she get over there to that creek, and I kid you not, I mean, she gun it, and you hear her gun a little more, she got that little, you know, on the, on the, on the handlebar, there's that rep thing, that accelerator thing. Because it ain't got foot like a car. You ain't got a braking up there. It's all by your hands. So she gunned that thing and gravity take over. And the nose of that thing just hit the hit the other side of that creek inside it. And that moped drops. Delandra flip over them handlebars. She Mary Lou retting into a field like somersault, somersault, somersault. Boom, come to a stop. She pop up on her feet. I couldn't believe it. I was like, boy, if I had a scorecard, I'd throw it up a 10 kind of thing. And she didn't get hurt or nothing. But, I mean, moped, I don't know if that thing going to run again. But she over there just kind of flipping into the field, and she is good. So why does this matter? Why I guess, The thing about it is Chet Dilroy, he teaches junior amateur archery. That's the story I'm getting to. The Delandra is just a bonus story. But he, he teaches that archery. And he got plenty of space out on his property, but in town they got them hay bales on the other side of the outfield fence at the softball field, and he had these junior archers. The kiddos learn how to do bow and arrows, and they shoot them at the, at the hay bales. See how that worked? They shoot them at the hay bales, and, and Chet teach them how. how to, he teach them how to be good shots or whatever. So he down there tonight, during our softball game, they got archery practice, okay? So we got that going on. We about to play a softball game. Mary Beth Tucker goes over there, and they got like kind of what looked like a, a a new concession stand. I told you it's it's basically like a box. You know, it's like a pre-made shed. They just drop on this spot, so it ain't painted yet, nothing like that. But it's a wooden box, and and they got the skittles back in there. You know, she ain't got no, she can't do no s'mores, start no fire. She can't bring them hot butter dinner rolls that are softer than a baby angel's leg. Nothing like that. She just skittles. Uh, they got hot dogs. I guess they done heated them up already and wrapped them in foil and that kind of thing. And then uh, sodies in the ice chest. And then they do got the snow cone ice in another ice chest that she scoop out with them with them flavors. So Mary Beth rode a horse to the fields tonight because she, she went to school for horses. She worked at the veterinary during the week. So I guess she's like, I just take my, take my horse down to the fields. Whatever. No big deal. It was the top of the... Second inning, I found myself on first base, you know, and first base is like hot lava to me. Like I can't, I can't stay on first base too long. I got to get down to second, you know, I steal bases. So that's how I go. So I did a little blue single. I'm on first and I got, I got to get down there. And then they know I'm going to. And Lonnie Jean, he's the, he's the game warden in town, but he also the umpire. He was like, don't, don't you, don't you steal second or something like that. Like he, he told me not to go in head first. That's what it was. He's like, don't you Pete Rose in the head first. And I was like, Lonnie Jean, you know, there's only one way to slide. You really trying to, and I didn't even finish saying my sentence. I was off. Boom. Like that, like a bullet mid sentence. I'm say, I, I seen him pitch that ball and I was just off to the races head first, like a squirrel on a hot fry. I was safe. I was just right in there. So we got to run around second. That's what we call scoring position. Now I'm staying on second base. Mary Beth Tucker, all of a sudden, I look at her horse is hightailing it across our softball field. Like it just bolted from just hanging out by the concession stand where she parked it, you know, kind of thing. It ain't like a car. You know, you put your car in park and take the keys and it ain't going to move. But uh, 
uh, the horse ain't got keys. You know, it either listened or you tied it up, but she didn't think she needed to tie it up, I guess. So she just had it hanging out there. And it's running across the outfield. Then I do some quick math because I look out across that field and I see them hay bales uh, where they're doing archery. And then I see that horse running and I see them hay bales and I think a horse eats hay. You know, that's probably that's probably what's going on here. And sure enough, boy, I mean, bingo, that horse just jumped so high to clear the outfield wall. It's like a four and a half foot fence. I mean, not the highest jump you could do, but it's, it's pretty impressive. It's, it's majestic. I'd go so far as call it a majestic jump. And it get out there by the things and landed on the other side. And junior amateur archers, they scattering everywhere like minnows out of a hand net, you know, just kind of getting everywhere because they didn't want to get, I don't know if they thought that horse was going to attack them. I mean, you steady see a big old beast running at you. You don't think too much. You just say, I got to get out the way. And that's what them little fellas are doing with them bow and arrows. They running with them. And that horse's name was Sarge. He just started munching that hay. And so there I am on second base just watching this. Everybody's heads are turned. We're watching it because it just ran right through the middle of our softball game. What are we going to do? Uh, now, Mary Beth Tucker, she's walking through center field. You know, she just kind of hand on her, you know, kind of a speed walk. Like, she, she it's urgent, but uh, Mary Beth Tucker running uh, don't happen very often. So she's, she's speed walking it out there. And her her brother, Russell, he's on our team. He's like, Mary Beth, get your horse off the field kind of thing. You know, she's just walking. I just steady focus, walking the same path that Sarge took, which was going to be a, a problem because she walk up to that fence and she like a toddler in the crib, you know, like reaching up like, okay, how am I going to do this? And it's chain link, you know, the outfield fence, but it's got them at banners for the advertisers out there on the thing. And she get up and, and now it's just, now everybody's just interested in seeing well, what's going to happen next? Is Mary Beth going to seriously just try to climb this fence? Because uh, that's that's entertainment right there. I mean, that's nobody knows how that's going to end. It's not something like, boy, uh, uh, I can see where this is going. I can't. I can't imagine her getting over it. That's part of what you're rooting for. Climb that fence, Mary Beth. But then you're like, is she going to fall? Is she going to give up? Is she going to walk all the way around? I mean, we you know we we didn't think about all that. At some point, you're going to have to put both feet off the ground. Cause you got to wedge your little toe into the squares of them chain link fence and then hoist yourself over kind of thing. So it was a sight to behold, just trying to figure out, okay, how's she going to do this? Um, and so she, the thing about it, Mary Beth too, it's super easy if you a kid, you know, to get them, them toes in there, but she got wide feet and she's an adult anyway. And then with an adult with the wide feet, it's like, uh, what are we going to do here, Mary Beth? So she gave up on that. She gave up and she's like, I'm going to have to, you know, make the long walk around. So she abandoned in that plan. She got one hand on her side. She's like, hold on, I got it kind of thing. So we just waiting for her to circle around. She got to go to the uh, uh the edge of the field and then back around the fence instead of climbing over it kind of thing. Because the outfield fence is just it's basically the outfield. It, it don't go down the whole side of the or the softball fields. Anyways, I'm thinking just leave that horse there, you know, and go to work in a concession stand, Mary Beth. Now you're leaving a line back there. She finally got over there, grabbed a fist of hay, and walked that horse, you know, back over to the concession stand. It's fine, but, you know, it's like if you're over by a concession stand just waiting around and then you see like a banana split, you know, that's free out there, that's kind of what I think, you know, went through the horse's mind was like, I could go get that right now kind of thing, and it did. You know, it's a horse. It ain't hay. Anyways, them junior archers, they kept practicing, but one, except one, one of the boys, he's crying, so his mama took him home. I guess he's too scared about that horse thing, but everybody else, they kept going, so then we back to our game, and I turn around, I see Rusty Tidwell at back. Now, I'm on second base, remember, because I done stole second. Game's back on, Rusty doubles, so I'm off to sec. I'm off second, head first in the home plate, safe. Now we got to run. No throw to the plate either. Well, they runners on first and second, sure enough, with two out in the bottom of the last inning. So fast forward, we ahead four to three, and this is it. If we can get them out, we won. But they got runners on first and second. We got Myron Curtis at shortstop. And they running on contact, you know, because it's like end of the game and you you trying to score, they hit a single. Well, their runner on second takes off with his head down, and he run right into Myron. And, I mean, he hit the ground hard. And then he tried to get up, you know, because he think, well, I got to get up and keep running. He didn't know the impact, what that did to him. Because he'd get back up and he'd stumble again and he'd back on the ground again. I mean, I would have hoisted Myron high because he couldn't, he, couldn't, uh, he couldn't get there. The impact when Myron got him more than he thought it was, he went right back down. Russell Tucker threw the ball in from, like, outfield. And Myron just tagged that wobbly fella out. Game was over, and like I would have put, yeah, you know, I would have hoisted Myron, but there ain't no way you can do that. Uh, he, he's a big boy. I mean, just ask the fellow that run into him, he'd tell you that too. 
he's just too heavy. Uh, but you could say that you could say it was the horse, it was the archery, it was Chet Dilroy's uh, class sprinting to safety, uh, Mary Beth Tucker speed walking. It could have been all that tonight, but I just call it a win. Do I care if Mary Beth Tucker brings her horse to the field next week? Nay. You see what I did there? Hey, we won. So where does that leave us? Well, we looking at two and four now. The twos is the wins and the fours is the loses. That's respectable. And it's a two-game win streak. That's a beautiful thing. You know they got them 30-30 clubs and like them 40-40 clubs in baseball where you get 40 home runs and you steal 40 bases? Uh, well, I'm going for the 525 club this season, I decided. Five doubles, 25 stolen bases. That's ambitious. I know them five doubles is, but that's how you got to set goals. You got to set goals higher than what you can really do. So that's where we are. I mean, we winning. Spirits is high. We got a new concession stand. It ain't painted, but it's, it's a wooden box. It got abandoned for a considerable amount of time so that the person running it could chase down a horse that was uh, just across the outfield fence scattering a junior archery class tonight. But in the end, it, it was a good night. So, hey, if you didn't have to chase down a horse today and get it back to the concession stand and try to climb a chain link fence with wide feet, I think you're doing okay is the way I look at it. So I got another week to get ready, but I mean, Bud's Burger Shed's on a on a roll. You want to get yourself a hat or a sweatshirt or the shirt? I got the shirt on under there, I think. Uh, go to the link in the podcast, you know, them, them show notes, and uh, you can you can check it all out there. And also, if you just want to run into me this week, you can find me on the TikTok at Tavin Dillard, Instagrams at Tavin Dillard, the YouTube's at Sweet Tea Films. If you're watching this video, you on the YouTube's because that's where it's at. But if you ain't watching the video and you just listen to it with your ears because it's a podcast, it's like a radio show, there ain't like a picture to look at, then then you you can find me on Sweet Tea Rooms because you ain't on the YouTube, you're on the podcast or whatever. So stay in touch and you can you can find all my stuff at tavendiller.com. I do personal greetings. It's that time of year. Some folks uh, order them for the holidays or just friends' birthdays where I wish them, you know, wish them well or as they say, well wishes. But I appreciate y'all taking time to listen. I hope you have a great day or evening, depending on when you're listening to this. Y'all stay good, be well, and we'll see you later.